On Sunday, December 10th, Guyana's President Mohamed Irfan Ali made it pellucidly clear that the country's position on the border dispute with Venezuela is not up for negotiation. We made it very clear that on the issue of our border controversy in relation to our border, there is absolutely no compromise. This matter is before the ICJ, and that is where it shall be settled. There is no negotiations on this. There is no compromise on this. As you're aware, the ICJ has already issued orders that call on Venezuela to ensure that status quo remains. It was announced last Sunday that the presidents of Guyana and of Venezuela have agreed to a proposed meeting scheduled for Friday, December 15 at 10 a.m. The heads of government will meet in St. Vincent and the Grenadines for a discussion related to the dispute. Earlier today, the president reiterated Guyana's position. Esquivo belongs to Guyana <clears throat> without any shadow of a doubt. And the controversy shall be settled at the ICJ. There is absolutely no wavering from this position. Here's the big question everyone's asking. If Guyana is not open to negotiation, why then agree to meet? That's what we'll try and find out. You are watching The Final Takeaway, where we analyze information and facts and offer opinions on issues of interest across the globe. Like, share, and subscribe to keep up to date and keep the conversation going. Thank you. Thanks for staying with us. So let's get to it. I've watched over one hour of interviews with Guyana's president on the question of what will be discussed at the meeting. He has yet to provide a clear-cut response. He did say there's plenty to discuss between the countries. There are so many things uh, to talk about, you know. You have the uh, migration issue, you have climate change, you have uh, consequential matters. And, and one of the important things uh, is to ensure that this region remains peaceful. Here's my question. Since when? Since when there's plenty to discuss? Weren't these two government, heads of government, just at each other's throats, so to speak? We all know there is no love lost between Venezuelan's president, Nicolas Maduro, and Guyana's president, Irfan Ali. So rest assured, they're not going to get chummy all of a sudden, are they? While many would love to see the two heads of government do a friendly fist bump, and have a laugh over coffee. These two individuals have vastly different ideologies and political interests. Maduro leans dictatorial and Ali leans democratic in terms of their approaches to dealing with the current Esequibo border dispute. On top of that, President Ali is already going into the meeting with apprehension. If he's not going to negotiate on this matter, why go? What else is there to talk about? Let's put this in everyday context. If your neighbor is trying to take your land, a land you have the title to in black and white, a deed or a lease, would you sit down and have a chat with them about your ownership of your land? Especially if they were hostile toward you and threatened to take your property by force? I think not. So, we began with this question. What will Guyana and Venezuela's presidents discuss at the upcoming meeting regarding the dispute about who owns Esequibo? Nothing. There's nothing to discuss, especially since this case is pending before the world court, and especially since the, the dispute has long been settled in 1899. The sole issue is Venezuela's lack of acceptance of Guyana's sovereign rights over Esequibo and its plans to seize and control the territory in question. Guyana insists the territorial dispute has been resolved 
with the 1899 Paris Tribunal Award. Venezuela says the award is not legally valid and the 1966 Geneva Agreement between the two countries is the only legally binding document to bring about a resolution. Furthermore, Venezuela rejects the International Court of Justice's legal power to try the case on its merits and make a final ruling on the territory. Venezuela demonstrated its lack of respect for the court's jurisdiction when it went against the court's provisional measures set out on December 1, 2023. The measures imposed barred Venezuela from taking any action that would quote-unquote aggravate or extend the rift with Guyana. Yet Venezuela approved a special election held on December 3rd to annex Esequibo and add the territory to its official map. Last week, Maduro ordered the current Venezuela map be redrawn to include Esequibo, which they call Guayana Esequiba. After all, after all of this, what is there for Guyana's president to discuss at a face-to-face -face meeting with Maduro? It's anyone's guess. No announcement was made about the meeting agenda so far, leaving everyone to speculate on what's on the table for discussion. The official announcement of the meeting came from St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez, who was at the time speaking at a special press briefing. According to the Prime Minister, the meeting is coming off the ground thanks to unwavering support by the Caribbean community, that's CARICOM, La and the Latin American and Caribbean states, CELAC, and Brazil's president, Luiz Inacio Lula da Silva. Da Silva is expected to play an observer role at the meeting, along with a United Nations Undersecretary General. The UN Secretary General, in a press statement, stated its commitment to promote efforts in favor of face-to-face -face dialogue between the parties. I believe the United Nations and the UN Security Council got involved at this juncture following reports made by the Guyanese government regarding President Maduro's threats to get the annexation of Esequibo on the way. Maduro also declared companies will be granted permission to explore and exploit oil in Esequibo, a territory belonging to Guyana, the leader's bold declaration caused panic among Guyanese and investors who are worried they could be caught in the middle of a hostile takeover by Venezuela. Many sighed in relief when it was announced that the two presidents planned to meet to hash out their differences, despite it being a sign of hope and potentially a move in the direction of a peaceful outcome. Many people, including Guyanese, believe Guyana's president should not meet with Maduro. They think of it as a sign of weakness to sit and speak with a quote-unquote bully referring to Maduro. As a matter of fact, here are some of the online comments by members of our community here at the final takeaway. I wonder if Venezuela had a superpower like North Korea, where Gu Guyana is, if Maduro would have done the same. I'm happy for this news, but I see those as giving a bully what he wants, says one commenter. Another said, Ali, please don't go. It's a trap. Someone else said, Ali is a disgrace. He wants to meet with Maduro. He should refer Maduro to the British government. And one other person said, I pray God that Maduro accept the true boundary of Guyana and give up his fight for the Esequibo region that rightfully belongs to Guyana. How about you weigh in and tell us what you think? Should Guyana participate or not, considering that a case regarding the border dispute is currently before the International Court of Justice. The court was asked to decide on the boundaries of Guyana. The case will be decided on its merits since Guyana's sovereign ownership of Esequibo was already decided in 1899 
by a tribunal in Paris. Thank you for watching The Final Takeaway. We will be bringing you more updates as this story develops. Remember to subscribe and hit the, the bell icon for instant notifications once a new video is uploaded on this channel. Check out all our related videos, share, like, and come back for more. So long.